Mean everybody. Hope everybody's having a uh, good winter evening. All right, I guess everybody's in. It's going to come in tonight. Yep, maybe they're still coming in. <laughs> All right, as we saw, uh, kind of the theme of the uh, afternoon newsletter was, is that if we know what the, uh, what human nature no or does normally, in this case, we saw there was a buy signal right here on the 50-day, or I'm sorry, the 200-day moving average coming out of the oversold area. What was our next target if it got through the T-line? The 50-day moving average. We saw consolidation. Did we know if it was a reversal or a full-scale, uh, or a reversal or just consolidation? Well, that was pretty evident using the T-line that they couldn't even close it back below the T-line, which meant we probably had a J-hook pattern setting up to push through the 50-day moving average, which, as we saw today, kind of confirmed that. Now, if this is a J-hook pattern, and we know that this level, or this range right here, is going to be the same as this range right here, you've got to kind of expect the Dow to come up and test the, uh, the recent highs. And on the other side, where we've kind of had that little pullback right back to the T-line on the S&P 500, that if this is a J-hook pattern, that tells us if this wave right here it's going to be the same as this wave, but this level right here is not going to act as resistance. We probably should watch to see what happens when it gets up to the top of the trend channel, which will be up off the chart here. And the NASDAQ also confirming that they weren't going to take it down below the T-line, that if you drew a line, let's see if I can make this a little bit. If we draw a line, kind of right up through the tops here, but this means this is where our upside target is. Now, does that mean that's where it's going to go? Definitely not, but the probability say we're still in an uptrend. We haven't seen a reversal signal, um, but we're more than likely going to see more upside based on the J-hook pattern and where the possible resistance level is. All right, other things that are affecting the market or not affecting the market. Crude oil, back up over 100 bucks. Doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Still in an uptrend. Gold, also coming out of this uh, fry pan bottom. I wouldn't uh, be too surprised if this is wave one and this is wave three. We're getting pretty close to the end of wave three. So we see some sort of consolidation up here to come back. They already tested it once to see if the 200 is going to be a resistance. It should come back at least to test the T-line. And silver also uh, doing a little J-hook. If it opens positive, it tells us this wave is still in progress, more upside. Let's see, interest rates, bond prices don't seem to be moving anywhere with any great hurry. So we're kind of trading flat with a slightly down bias, but not really going anywhere, which means interest rates aren't going to be going anywhere. And the dollar still in this slow downtrend, which means the euro is still in this slow uptrend. And what else we got? The Japanese yen. This one's just moving absolutely sideways. I wouldn't be trading uh, this one long or short. And the British pound. Uh, that one's still probably in a moderate uptrend, using the T-line as support. This one can still be bought if it's uh, on a opens positive tomorrow. All right, and what else do we have here? Oh, yeah, the re or the way I trade commodities. Some people were asking today because I can run through the charts in a matter of a minute to see whether this is a chart that you'd be going long or short. And right now, this is a live cattle. That's not showing us any direction. 
feeder cattle is really not showing us any direction. I don't know whether it's pulling back or going to bounce back up. But whatever it's doing, it's not doing anything very concisely. But the other day, I did buy lean hogs because of one very simple factor. Let's see if I can. We're coming out of this kind of big fry pan bottom. We had a J-hook pattern. When it breaks out through this level, that tells me I have more upside. So today I was in it. Uh, uh, and it was trading uh, uh, trading higher today, but not real extensively higher. So what some people wanted to see is why I was in and out today. Let's see if I can go back to where... Maybe, I mean, that's better. Okay. Let's take a look at this chart. In the April hogs, I was buying when it broke out through this level. Because notice what we had in here. We had a morning star signal, consolidation, then your doji bullish confirmation, and then a gap out through the resistance level. So it made some very good profits. Now, it was trading up today. After a big day, what usually happens after a big day? You usually get some consolidation type days. So this was trading up today. And then when we started seeing it uh, came up, came back to the T line, started back up again, which meant we pretty much uh, held the position. However, there was a second sell signal that took us back down below the T line. So that was a good indication that they weren't going up above this level. It was time to take profits. Why was it time to take profits on this day? Because we were already well up in the overbought condition, and we had a doji-type day over here, which meant if we had another big day, another doji-type day, there wasn't really any sense uh, staying in it if it was going to be an indecisive trading day. We are just putting ourselves at risk. So that's why using the 10-minute chart, becomes very effective in the sense that we have a sell signal, starts back up. Is my audio low? Bally, uh, I use uh, uh, Thinkorswim because I can trade commodities, options, stocks, everything in that one account without having to move money back and forth. So this was my sell signal. But they couldn't get back up. This was a fry pan bottom that failed, closed back below the T-line, also told us that they weren't going up any higher. It was time to take profits. And it was on a day that was up in the overbought area in the uh, daily chart. Told us maybe it's getting a little bit uh, sluggish up here. Because notice how far away we are from the T-line as well as the 3-T-line. So during the day, we also... I say we, I, ah, traded uh, cotton because the cotton chart was setting up where it was in an uptrend, left-right combo. It was starting to trade positive uh, after consolidating early in the day, coming back up, which told us more than likely we're going up to the top of the trend channel. So same scenario here. We started, or I started buying, notice the doji sandwich setup, buying right in here, and uh, was fairly well maintained up until here. But if I started seeing sell signals and we're way above the T-line, on the 10-minute chart, all I do is I slip back to the 5-minute chart. If the five-minute chart says, oops, they're closing back below the T-line, what's it going to do next? Either the five-minute chart better stay above the T-line telling me the 10-minute chart's not going to go below the T-line, or if they continue to take it down. So I started closing out right here with the idea that we were way up in the overbought area That if it uh, after a big run-up. So I had some very good profits. I got back in down here, but then got back out when it closed back below the T-line. Um, because this was actually telling me uh, when they did the sell signal right here back to the T-line and started trading it lower, 
they weren't going up to the top of the or buying on the close. They were selling on the close. So it was time to close out that trade. So that was just kind of how I use the uh, uh, the five and ten minute charts when I'm trading on on uh, on an intraday basis. All right, let's go take a look at some of the stocks that we've been uh, recommending. We're still in TKMR. Now we took off some of the position up here the other day uh, for the same uh, logic. Let's see if I can get this right. I don't know where it was, but at some point, must have been on this day, some point with it gapping up and then closing back below the T-line, it was time to take profit. So we took off half the position that day uh, because that had been a gap up. Remember, anytime you see a gap up in the overbought condition, start looking for some profit taking. So closed out half the position. And then today was a very simple criteria. On this dark cloud, if it opened lower, we closed out the position. The fact that they opened it higher and trading higher kept us in, number one. Number two, we're only in half a position, but we're in a half a position in a very high-risk area. We're well up in the overbought area, and they start gapping it and showing some selling. If it keeps moving up, we're still making good money on uh, uh on the on a half a position, what's the cost uh, to buy these? What, Andy? All right, Pran was another one where we had the kicker signal. It came back down and notice what it did: smack dab on the 50. It did a doji, which told us a very simple story. Commodities commodities have different uh, uh, margins. And just to go through this real quick, oh, let's say hogs, since that's what I was trading. Hogs might have a an $1,100 margin. That means if you want to buy a contract of of hogs, you have to have enough uh, equity in your account of $1,100 for that. So that's your margin to buy that one contract. It doesn't matter whether you buy that contract at this level or this level. It's where you buy it. And once you buy it, if it moves this way, you're making a profit. Once you buy it and it moves this way, you're, you're taking a loss. Now, that's $1,100 on that one. That's because the price movement, based upon uh, that amount of leverage, is what the brokerage firm comes up with is the amount of risk that they want to take so they make the margin. Now, on crude oil, a contract of crude oil may be 6500 Let me check. Uh, initial margin is $4,510 for a, uh, a contract of uh, crude oil because that's more volatile. That's going to move around a lot more. Um, so they need $4,500. So it's not the cost. It's the amount of margin that you, you want to have or need in your account. Why do you trade commodities? Are they potentially more profitable? Why not stay with stocks? Uh, because during the middle part of the day, as we know, stocks kind of slow down. And remember, candlesticks were developed on the most basic of all commodities, which was rice. And the Japanese rice traders that use candlesticks to uh, to make their rice trades, not only became wealthy, they became legendarily wealthy on a commodity that is very slow moving. So the uh, uh, commodities are they are faster moving, um, and they trade in the middle part of the day when stocks aren't trading as much. So my normal trading day is during the first 45 minutes as the market opens up. I'm going to be putting on stock positions, and when all that settles down, then the commodity markets start uh, opening up. Um, that taking this time leaves use list to the end of the session. Let's see, not, not time to explain commodities. Okay, Wayne, we try to give every give as much information on everything in here using candlesticks. So not all topics will be straight 
stocks or options or commodities. Um, yeah, you can blow out your account, but the reason that you're using candlesticks is pretty much to tell you which which direction a price move is is likely to to go. Okay, another one that uh, we owned or own is uh, NWBO. We recommended this the other day because of the Doji sandwich that broke out through this level. Then we have another Doji sandwich. So all you can do with this one is stay long until you see a sell signal. Um, Back to Pran. Oops. Did I goof up? Did I forget Pran? Pran did a uh, doji gap up best friend signal through the T-line. Notice where we are. We're right on this downtrending channel, which makes tomorrow's trading very simple. If this opens positive, you want to be a buyer because if it breaks through this level after your best friend signal, more than likely they're taking this back up where probably to the top of the trend channel, somewhere up in this range. Um, and what else? And net links. Uh, not net links. New link. Notice a little wedge formation, and then Friday it popped, saved a lot of, a lot of our option trades, uh, spreads that we had on. And it's still heading higher, so all you can do is stay long. Notice how this one started, coming out of that slow curve, now a J-hook pattern. Anytime you see a stock that's moving up and consolidating, that pretty much tells you that there's not exuberance in this. It's more solid buying. Um, yeah, your best friend is the uh, doji followed by a gap up, preferably out of the oversold condition. Okay, PEIX also, that doji sandwich right here coming out of this rounding bottom, and notice how the uptrend started. There's your doji hammer gap up, your best friend, and now you're breaking, up, breaking out through this level with a gap up, gap up. I would suspect this is still your upside potential. It's coming back up to the trend channel or the top of this trend channel. Let me see if I can draw a line here that would be... That means we still got some more upside into this this range. So I saw somebody mention today in the chat room that they took their profits on on a PEIX. So you have to ask yourself if you're buying based on a candlestick buy signal, why aren't you holding until you see a candlestick sell signal? A lot of people take profits because they have one fear, and that is. Boy, would I look stupid if I had a profit and all of a sudden I let it go back to a loss. That's the exact reason why you want to analyze the charts to tell you whether they are starting to sell or whether you're still in an uptrend. And here was another one. PVA was one that we were discussing the other day because somebody said, I got stopped out, and then it goes right back up. Boy, I hate that. What do I do? Well, the answer is, if you're in an uptrend and you've got a pattern and it gaps down, stops you out, there's numerous times where I get stopped out and I say, all right, what are they doing with it now? And if they're bringing it back up, I buy it back in. Because if I miss out on 40 cents or 60 cents, that's not why I'm in this chart. I'm in this chart because if it closes above the T line, it tells me I'm going higher. What are we always afraid of? Closing out, we buy back in, it turns right around and Closes us, or we have to get back out with two losses. Well, that that was always my fear until candlesticks came along, and I can still see when they're still buying or when they're starting to sell off. And then I know they can close it out uh, at a moderately close uh, to where I bought in. And so, what do we know about the uh, belt hold type signal? No, we wiped out some sellers. That's usually when the trajectory is going to be pretty strong. I think we did that same scenario over here on AER, where we had this big fry pan bottom and then the trajectory moving up pretty strong. This one can still be bought on a positive open doji sandwich, still breaking you out of this whole range, taking you into a possible, or a possible move of that range right there. 
let's see. So that was PVA, that was AER, uh, kind of uh, what, what's a good example of that belt hole type signal. Bah. There's, there's a belt hold signal. And then notice what's happened after that. It's turning right around and heading back up. Because what did this tell us? They took us there, told us everybody that was selling finally got bought out, and then the bulls stepped in. That was pretty clear that the sellers were gone, the bulls were stepping in. So this uptrend is usually the result of all the sellers being gone. There's not that much selling, and there's sellers left me to, to sell uh, or buy into. And that's what usually creates a very strong up, uptrend. Uh, this is another reason why. You always hold on to a position until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. This is a nice fry pan bottom breakout. It's pulled back. We had a gap down the other day on, oh, they added new stock. That's what it was. That did not change investor sentiment. All that did was change uh, supply and demand and a quick reaction, which is usually the case. What? What their first initial reaction to most people is, oh, man, they're putting out new stock. That's diluting. Well, they're usually putting out new stock because they're growing so fast. They need to have more capital. So once people realize that, that's when they start buying right back in. So anytime you see a situation that's being reversed based upon a non, I don't want to say, non-sentimental basis, that is a uh, fundamental type thing like new stock, get ready to buy it. Uh, buy it back in. I think we saw that a long time ago in, oh, in uh, Freeport Macman. I don't know whether we can go back that far. And I don't even know whether we can go anywhere with this one there. Oh, it was way back here somewhere where bah. that was kind of a futile Anyways, use the charts to tell you that uh, if they don't close it below the T-line and they're not selling below the T-line, that tells you that there's still buyers there and you're still in an uptrend. The green trend line right here is the three T-line, three exponential moving average. And that in combination with your T-line, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. That's when the three T starts kicking in. If you see... Prices move well away from the T-line. If they come back through the 3T-line on a sell signal, it usually means they're going to come back to the T-line, just to give you a little bit quicker analysis of when to, to get out. Uh, yes, usually the, uh, uh, the three gap-ups is time to look for a sell. And this is probably to start watching. This is where I'd be more leery. You're in the overbought condition. You went from the oversold condition with a one gap up. Now you've got two more gap ups in the overbought condition. Haven't seen anything yet to tell us the sellers are taking control, but just going to be a little bit more leery. At this point, I'd have a sell stop at today's open, because if they were able to bring it back down through there, that means the sellers have taken control, and they're probably bringing it back down to some place, such as the T-line. Uh, yes, that, that could be well, yeah, well be that uh, PEIX is going to continue higher. Where? Again, I would uh, use the top of this trend channel, which I think indicated that if it, was, it had the possibility of coming up into the 1120 area in that, that range. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, KNDI. This is one we've been trading quite well, and then today we had a kicker signal that broke it out to the upside. A kicker signal off the T-line broke it out to the upside, which tells me now we're in wave three. You can still be buying this one on positive trading tomorrow. Just use the T-line. At this point, I'd use the halfway point of this candle because that would be the first place to tell me that the sellers are taking control, number one. Number two it would tell me that they did not break out through this level. They came back into the trading range. So I'd close it out and close back below the T-line. After that, I'm sorry, the halfway point of this candle. 
after that, I use the T line as my uh, uh, stop. Okay, and then NVAX. That's got a nice little slow curve. This one you buy on the slow curves because the slow curves is kind of that slingshot effect to the upside. We had another one. Uh, bah. YRCW. Nice slow curve. Tells me if they open this positive, they're going to break out through this level, which means wave one, wave two, going into wave three. And notice how this wave started, the inverted hammer bullish confirmation. Now, I'll reiterate that any time you see an inverted hammer and then bullish confirmation, the probabilities are 95% or greater. That's an unofficial statistic. Let's say it's huge percentage probability that you're going to be in an uptrend. Uh, let's see. We're going to get to live here. I, mean, I guess we might as well do it right now. Live, we sold out or closed because we're back below the T-line. Does that mean this trend's over? No, because look what it did over here. So all we do is we don't know whether they're going to back it off here or back it off to here, close out the position, and then if we see a buy signal like this, we can always be back in. If we see it over the next couple of days a morning star signal taking it back up, what's that telling us? That's telling us the subtrending channel is, is still in progress. Um. Where would you have placed a stop loss for DHRM after a after this big price move? I after the next day they did a doji. I would have closed out if they had opened it and traded it back below this level. The fact that they gapped it down gives me a little bit different uh, viewpoint. They've gapped it down. They're still above the T line. If they had traded it from here back down, I knew where they were taking it, down to the T-line. When they gapped it down to the T-line, I didn't have any uh, alternative other than to see whether they were going to hold the T-line. And if they did, all that told me was that this uptrend was still in progress. Uh, no, the inverted hammer just has to be in a, a position that would tell you that uh, – like right there at the T-line, and then the next day bullish confirmation taking it up through the T-line. Now, um, where you like to see the uh, inverted hammer is somewhere down in the oversold condition, uh, but it doesn't have to be there. Now, anytime you see something in an oversold condition, like a buy signal, the probabilities are that much greater that you're going to see the uptrend. Now, here's a left-right combo. Notice the little... Doji, inverted hammer, I guess a uh, gravestone doji, bullish engulfing, left-right combo, above the T-line. This is the type of uh, visual analysis that makes trading very simple. You can pretty well see there's a downtrending channel here. We've had a left-right combo that closed above the T-line. Your stochastics are heading up. If they open this positive and start trading up positive the next day, what's that telling us? Number one, it's confirming the left-right combo signal. Number two, it's telling us it's staying above the T-line. And three, it's telling us it's not going to be resisting at this level anymore. That tells me we're in wave three. I would still be a buyer of this because if this opens positive tomorrow, what's it potentially forming? A doji sandwich. If it moves up this magnitude tomorrow, where does that put us? Well up above this high, which means my next target now is drawing a line, trend line up through the tops, kind of parallel to the bottom. Tells me my uptrend got us, uh, takes us up at least to that uh, that level. Oh, okay, I better zip through some of these, or you'll be here until the cows come home. Um, ZGNX, same scenario, uptrend, indecisive trading, starting back up. Where's your target? Probably the top of the trend channel. Anytime you can recognize a channel. That means everybody and their brother can recognize a channel. It's more than likely going to go to where everybody thinks the next target is, which is the top of the channel. NVIX. Nice fry pan bottom. This opened positive, but closed back uh, 
lower. Is this a sell signal? No, it's not a dark cloud because it didn't open above the previous day's open or high, and it didn't really tell us anything. This is just a down day and an uptrend, and notice where it closed, right above the 3T line. So it's above the 3T line as well as the T line after a bullish signal. That tells me this is still in progress. More than likely, you're going to see this open positive and trade positive tomorrow. That's based on the uh, oh, the uh, let me see the factor that the market doesn't open up up down 140 points on the open. XLNR, or let's see, XLRN, same scenario. Closed right on the T line after this rounding bottom. It didn't close below the T line, so just look for a uh, positive open. If it starts trading positive and comes back up through this level, that's breaking that downward trend channel, bouncing off uh, near the 50-day moving average. Uh, CUR, very simple. Coming out of the slow curve, left-right combo, break out through this level, big up day, and then sold off. What's that? That's profit taking. So this is very simple. If they open this lower and start trading lower, you close out the position. That tells us they failed up here at this level. If they open positive, you want to be a buyer because that tells you the profit taking's over. They're still taking this one up. Uh, let's see. VIOL. Stay long. This is a case where, again, where they took it back down, closed it right on the T line. What they do the next day? Opened it right up and took it back up because this is an uptrend at this point. And C E R S. Right. J hook pattern right off the T line area. So notice where you had your buy signal starting down here with a hammer type signal right off the 200 day moving average at the same level it bottomed out before, close above the T line. Now you've done a J hook. And what did the J hook tell us? If there's another wave like this to the upside, this level is not acting as resistance. Uh, you want to be buying this one on positive trading. FEYE starting to come back up. Slow rounding curve. There's your piercing signal. There's your slow curve. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one. Wave one, wave two, going into wave three. And ECYT is another good looking chart. Doji's strong up move, J hook, Doji right here. Makes this very simple. If this opens positive, you can be buying immediately. And you just use a close back below the open as your stop because that would tell you you're back down to the trading range. All right. Tesla is one that everybody's been following. Tesla. Just stay long until you see a sell signal. SRPT was one uh, uh, that we have. Whoops, not that. SRPT. Notice the slow curve. Notice the doji sandwich. Where do you think this is going? There's your first target right there. And SATS. When you see a big reversal like this, that tells you there's been a definite change of investor sentiment. It tells you the bottom of this channel is now over. They came down to the 200, did a huge doji, followed by bullish confirmation. Very simple. The price is going to move in the direction of how they open it. If you've got a huge doji hammer type signal and they open a positive, that tells you they've reversed this. This has probably still got a very strong up move to it. And BBRY, there's that slow curve kicker type signal through the 50, through the, I'm sorry, through the 200, above the T line, above the 20, makes this very simple also. If they open this positive, wave three is starting with a kicker signal. Remember, the kicker signal is your strongest signal, which means there's a definite change of investor sentiment. So if they break this downtrending channel, Wave three could be the same magnitude as this move right here. CTRL.
There's a little morning star signal closing right at the 50, right by the T-line. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive, all these areas are acting as a resistance. They're confirming the, uh, uh, the, the morning star signal. And if they can break this down trending channel, that tells us we're still in a strong uptrend. Since you get cautious when far above the T-line, do you get cautious when far above the 200? Uh, is that BBRY? Ah. Uh, no. The 200 has absolutely nothing to do with the price other than the fact that it might be a resistance level. If this starts moving positive, it doesn't matter where the 200 is because by that time the 200 is moving up and the 50 is already moving up. So the 200 is just a moving average that is used as a target. Once that target is dissipated, now it's the chart pattern that you definitely uh, want to be following. Let's see. How many days do you give a stock to start the expected move before moving into another stock? Such as PACB. Uh, probably only one more day. Because if this rolled over and started trading lower tomorrow, what's that tell me about this signal? Pretty much tells me they fizzled. Now, does that mean I give up on the uh, trade? Definitely not. I close out the position. If it does another buy signal, comes back to the T line, does another buy signal, coming out of the cradle, then I'll buy. I don't mind paying up here knowing that I've got a confirmed buy signal, then holding on to something that might dwindle here for the next two weeks. And in that two weeks, I could have used that as funds for three more trades and made money until I saw the next buy signal in this one. Oh, Andy, yes, I'll try to go over vertical spreads. Uh, let's see. I'll try to figure out how to do that. Um, yeah, remind me, Andy, remind me again before when we get done here, I'll do a quick, quick invertible or uh, vertible, rah, vertical spread. Uh, scenario. Let's see. I N S Y. Some charts are just very good visual charts to watch. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your breakout. There's your J hook pattern. There's your doji sandwich that breaks out through this level. Where is this one going? If this is wave one, we've still got another two and a half points on this one to the upside. And. NQ, I know there are a lot of people who are watching NQ. This is where the T-line becomes your friend. Now, when, how long did it take to get bored on this one? In this case, yeah, I'd be bored, but I'd know that they weren't selling it off. It was still in a slow up printing uh, move above this level. This one I'm more apt to just hold on to until I see either a Strong breakout or a, a sell signal. Um, all right, I'll try. To, all right. All right. Let me just see. I'm trying to read and think at the same time, and it just doesn't work. Whoops. What do I have? S. Yes. Dot S Y Z M. Well, shows about. Well, go on to the next one. X N P T. There's that wedge. Let's make this bigger. And notice where the wedge supported. Smack dab on the 50. There's your little left right combo. A break through the. Through the 50. Now they've confirmed by breaking out through this area. Wave one, wave two, and this is all consolidation that you can see is changing direction, but it was this little wedge that started breaking things out to the upside. I'm trying to think where that other, where there's a wedge. 
Is it in cotton? No. Ah, humbug. Now, ah, there was another wedge in one of the some place that I was going to illustrate. Did we do XOMA? XOMA. Left, uh, well, this one broke out of this downtrending channel. Now doing a J hook, and notice where it supported smack dab on the 50 day moving average. And we did YRCW, didn't we? YRCW was also that slow curve. Uh, NVAX was also, oops. That's kind of a little slow curve. This one can be bought. Slow curve here and a big J hook pattern tells me there's still another four points to the upside on that, that one. Uh, let's see, did we do C or yes, an O C N has a flutter kicker type signal down here. Hammer, gap up, spinning top. Bullish uh, confirmation of the spinning top. This one you want to buy because it's broken this downward trend channel. More than likely, your next target is going to be up here at the moving averages. Okay, fry pan bottoms, Humana. This is what you're looking for. Is that type of fry pan bottom with a doji bullish confirmation? Where is it taking you? Out through this level. You always get huge moves like this. Definitely not, but there's so many times where if you're in a position that has the opportunity to go up, that if there's a big, huge move, you're positioned to be in it uh, at the right time. CZR, another fry pan bottom that just broke out through this level. It tells me the next target is the top of this trend channel. So if you're coming out of a fry pan bottom, your probabilities of being an upside trade is extremely strong. ALLT has that same potential. There's a kind of a rounding bottom with a doji gap up. If this opens positive, breaking through all this congestion, it's probably got another price move the same magnitude as this one. And UAN, there's that fry pan bottom breakout. And what do we expect after a breakout? of a fry pan bottom, more upside. So made it very simple. If we had kind of a doji hammer day, what do we, did we need to ex see the next day? A positive open. What did we want to see at the 200? A breakthrough. This one was still moving. If this is wave one, wave three is still, I'd be looking at it up here somewhere to watch for a sell signal, which would bring you back down to the 200, and then your J hook from there. Remember, our classic is a fry pan bottom, strong price move. Our J-hook is a strong price move with consolidation and then back up. That's the classic combination. Uh, and these are what I'm calling option pops. This is where you have a situation like this. What do we expect for the next day? This one opened here and closed here, then gapped up and did a doji. If this opens positive, what do we expect? Probably another day like this, but to the upside. So this makes very simple for an option trade to see what options that if it opens positive, you'd be buying the options immediately or and or the stock anticipating another uh, move. And this move would take us up through the 50. Once it got through the 50, there's probably going to be more energy from everybody watching to see if it's going to get through the, uh, the 50 or not. So essentially, we've got a setup that tells us we want to be buying on positive trading. And we've got an opportunity to break through a resistance level where there's going to be more following, uh, uh, more buying following that. Uh, and that's APAM. A couple shorts, just in case you want to be offsetting. Looks like Twitter, if it opens lower tomorrow, it's got a bearish doji sandwich that's keeping you below the T line after a big uh, bearish engulfing, kind of a blue ice failure. That would tell me I'd be looking for this downward trend channel bottom uh, to be my next target. So that's got opportunities to be going short. Just to have a short in a market that uh, 
Yeah, it's always great to be 100% long, but you're a little bit more safe if you've got a few short positions in a bullish market. Starbucks, same scenario. You're in a downtrend, and it looks like it's failed. You've had a bearish engulfing signal, another bearish engulfing signal, a doji. If it opens lower, your doji sandwich is in progress, which means your downtrend remains in progress, meaning your more more downside is probably going to bring you down into this level. That could be a big, big sell-off there. And then Apple, even though Apple traded positive today, You're still in a downtrend ever since the doji gap down through the T-line, doji sandwich. Not a reversal signal of any sort. Stochastic's still heading down. I'd still think we're heading down here to the 200-day moving average as your next support. I think that, oh, all right, one more. I'm going to be recommending as a long-term hold uh, Whiting Petroleum. Um, this one, will, we're going to be setting up the long-term picks area finally. I think it will be here in the next couple of days. But I'll be writing up Whiting Petroleum, which is more the analysis of the chart. Notice where this one has had a nice strong run, pulled back, smack dab to the T-line, or I'm sorry, the 50-day moving average. And now they've broken out through this downtrending channel. And how do they do it? Again, with a doji sandwich, but for a long-term hold, see if I can make this. This stock is going through a big consolidation stage, and so I'm let's say I'm suggesting this. Uh, Whiting is in the uh, uh, back in B A K K E N. Uh, field up there in North Dakota. And the reason I'm interested in stocks that are uh, participating in that field is because they are finding huge amounts of gas and oil in that area set to rival uh, Texas. Uh, and we were talking about this today. Uh, um, yeah, long term in my case is two more months or two months or longer. But in this case, with the development of that field up there, right now, you can't drive on the roads up there without being in a traffic jam of tanker trucks that are going out and picking up all the oil from these wells constantly, and they're taking it up to the railroad lines. At some point, if, when, if and when they put the uh, a, uh, pipeline in there, this area is just going to be cranking out oil like all get out. Right now, they say that if you take a picture of the United States from a satellite, you can see all the uh, flares of North Dakota just lights up that area like a Christmas tree. So there is still a lot of potential, and we were discussing in the chat room today that right now they're saying there's uh, only 3% unemployment in in this area up there in North Dakota. I think that's a misstatement. I think they're probably at minus 5% to 10% unemployment. Um, they're paying $17, hour, or $17 an hour uh, to work at Walmart as a beginning job. Somebody said they're paying $2,000 bonuses at McDonald's to work there. There's no... Uh, uh, oh, there's no place to... Yeah, there's no place... Uh, uh, to live in the whole area. So the place is booming, and it's not going to slow down. I'm sure this area is going to be uh, um, – this area is going to be uh, uh, developed even further, and there's still tons of potential up there. So that's why I'm picking this area out. I'd rather be buying stocks right now that are in an area – where the uh, employment is so thin, I, I was I was telling uh, the chat room today that driving back from New Jersey last weekend, they were advertising on the radio for people to come to that there was one company willing to pay truck drivers a hundred thousand dollars a year plus all the benefits to 
to move to uh, North Dakota and drive truck for them. So, um, yes, uh, so they're they're in good areas up there uh, all through the uh, north where this uh, this whole basin of new oil and gas is found. Um, <laughs> that's right. Yes, uh, that that's true. They are uh, uh, Sandy's uh, relatives live up there, and I mean they're just inundated, and they're making very good money because they drilled a well on uh, a corner of their property. So a lot of these farmers that were struggling are now doing quite well with the uh, oil income. So, anyways. We will be doing long-term picks, and that is going to be a basis uh, or based upon a good chart pattern and a reason or discovering the reason why those chart patterns are being acting well. Um, so um, that's going to probably be our first pick out of the shoot. Um, WLL. Okay, so now, is there any question questions on candlesticks? So Scotty dropped after hours on postponement of GAAP earnings. How would continuation of that reaction affect your trading Tuesday? We sold out of uh, Scotty stock on the close today. Only for that specific reason is Scotty has been so volatile that they're, I mean, they could go any direction. We kept options because at least with an option, if this stock had opened up down here on the stock, you'd have a huge loss. On the options, now you didn't lose that much. But we'll still be watching this uh, to see how the reaction is once they open the stock. I know it was trading down around 75 uh, after closing around 81 today or it was trading as high as 81 after hours, and then it's trading down here. So we'll have to watch it. Um, uh, TKMR is a prime example with respect to my previous question about being cautious substantially above the 200-day uh, moving average. Stocks is a 22 and 200-day moving average is around 8. Uh, remember, we're not buying the moving averages. We're buying the stock. So the fact that the stock price is moving right now has nothing to do with the moving average. The moving average is the moving average. This is the stock price. So obviously, if a stock price is moving for some reason, a 200-day moving average, which is averaging back here, is not going to catch up. It's this one that we're more interested in on a fast price move. Number one, and the 3T, if it's moving away from both of these moving averages. At this point, it doesn't look like it's moving away from the 3T excessively. So at this point, we're going to stay long until we see a sell signal. So again, this moving average has nothing to do with the price. All it does is, let's say that moving average was up here. Everybody would be watching to see what it did when it got to that level. They aren't. We're not, uh, let's see, we're not buying or selling based upon the moving averages. We're buying and selling based upon what happens when it comes to one of those moving averages. Uh, okay, let's see. All right. Any more info on the two-day classes? Yes, that's coming out. I think they're sending it out uh, uh Tonight or even tomorrow, uh, we're going to get members in first, and then whatever empty seats are available, we'll put out to non-members. Uh, I had a down day in my candlesticks today during a big up day. Should this concern me, or do I just trade each stock as the candles tell me? Just don't, uh, T.O., no, there's a lot of times where I'll have a down day on a big up day, and then the next day is flat, and I'll have a huge up day. So it's on each individual stock uh, uh, pattern. I seem to miss the sell signals, BCRX. 
I need more train and would when to take profits. B C R X. We took profits here only because it did a sell signal right at this level. What we wanted to see was it breaking out. Now it's still closed above the three T line, which still gives us an indication. If it opens lower, they're taking it down to the T line. If they open up positive and take it back up, we'll probably buy back in if it breaks out through this level. But for safety factors, right now we just took some profits because it looked like it was resisting at this level. So if you stayed in it, you still have one very simple factor. You've got a doji gap up in the overbought condition at a resistance level. Now you're seeing some selling. If they further confirm it, you close it out. If it opens positive and trades positive, we're going to be buying back in. Now, does that mean we lose out on some of the profits? Yes, I'd rather lose out on some of the profits and continue to make more profits than to hold on to something and continue to take losses. Uh, let's see. What is the uh, stochastic setting for day trading? It's still the same. I just use 12 through 3 on all my on all my charts. That seems to work fairly well. Can we talk about the benefit of buying options versus or stocks? Yeah, there's some cases where if you don't know what's going to happen on a very volatile stock, instead of owning the stock, and let's say, for example, they got blasted, and you owned uh, a lot of stock or the stock price, and I'm just going to pick out a figure. Let's say you owned 1,000 shares that, uh, that you bought in here, and they had bad news where they opened it down here. All right, you're out 17 grand. On the other hand, let's say you bought the uh, 80 calls in here for around 560, anticipating that if it broke out, it was going up to 100. Then if it came way down here, maybe your 560 calls are now 40 cents, where you only lost uh, 5 grand versus whatever the other number would be, 25 grand. So there's sometimes we're using an option on a volatile trade is is protects being killed on the uh, only the stock price itself. Did you play stocks that were re suggested or scanned? Is that to me or is that uh, to T.O.? Please review the short shooting start and how long you wait on a down opening the next day for confirm. ISS, all right. ISIS. Uh, very simple. If this opens lower tomorrow, Close out the position. Where is it probably coming back to? At least the 3T, maybe the T line. The way that, that you need to stay in this one, it needs to open higher and trade higher. I'm telling you the profit taking was over and it's still going up. So if this opened lower, I'd probably give it a minute or two to see whether they were slowly taking it back up or whether they're taking it down. And also, if they opened it here and started taking it up, I'd still come in and put my sell stop at where it opened because it came up and then came back down through that. That would tell me they were confirming the sell signal. Uh, when you are buying stock, will you look for stock trading above the T line in the 10-minute chart? No, not necessarily uh, because usually if it opens positive, It's already above the T line. I want to be buying something that uh, that if it opens positive, in this case, it did back off. But if this gapped up and did a kicker type signal, I'm buying off the daily chart. The 10 minute chart doesn't really mean all that much. Now, on the other hand, if it opened up here and started immediately trading off, and it already gapped up, coming out of a slow curve. Now I may flip to my 10-minute chart and say, all right, they've backed off. Now are they bringing it back up? That will give me more uh, insight as to when to buy. Uh, Joe, yes, you can wait. As I say, the uh, this is just kind of a preliminary uh, uh, recommendation. Um, 
it'll be out officially when they get it all written up uh, as to what we should be watching for. Um, all right. On ISS, sell stop at open during the day or at close of market? No. If it opens lower tomorrow, what's our simple rule of a uh, candlestick reversal signal? It's going to, if it opens lower, that's telling us that the, uh, the sellers are in control. You close it out immediately. So buy on daily, sell on hourly. So buy on daily, sell on hourly. Uh, that I, I just have to <laughs> buy. So buy on daily, sell on hourly. <laughs> you got me there. That's uh, that's. Um, which T line are you using? Three or the eight? The eight is the uh, T line. The three T is the uh, three exponential moving average. So oh, if it opens up. If it opens positive tomorrow, I'd still put my sell stop one tick below the open or the you know, the previous day's uh, close. Because if it opens positive and then immediately you start selling off, that's telling you what they're doing. They're selling it. On a bull call spread, on a breakout, can you buy back the short and let the long run, or does it cost you too much to buy back? No, you can do that. You're just going to take a loss, um, a little bit of a loss on your uh, selling one, one side and buying back the other. Are you having a member mentorship in PA? Uh, Elliot, haven't, haven't figured out whether that will be feasible or not because I'm still unpacking the house and it's a mess. No, it's not too bad of a mess anymore. Just trying to figure out whether we could fit four or five people in here, uh, we might try it. But I'll know better what is this. this. We'll probably do it in early May, so I'll probably know better when we get to the beginning of April. Do you have, do you use shorter time frame for sales than buys? Uh, depends on where we are. Um, uh, my my time frame for a sell is uh, a little bit longer if we're down near, near the oversold area. It's a little bit faster if we're in the overbought area. Four or five hundred. John, you got me there. How do you distinguish between the sell if trades below the T line or closes below the T line? Uh, depending on what the market is doing. If the market is selling off hard and I see a sell signal and then it starts trading back down below the T-line, more than likely it's not going to come back up based upon what the market is doing. So I'll close when it comes back down through the T-line in a sluggish market. On the other hand, if I see a sell signal and it, it looks like it's trading back below the T-line but the market is staying flat or still continuing in an uptrend, I'll give it to the end of the day to see if they are just selling off and then coming back up above the T-line. Uh, yes, it would be in my uh, house uh, here. Um, no room, turkeys and deer have the room, is right. Um, yeah, we'd be doing it right in my office. Uh, my office, fortunately, uh, is, you know, finished downstairs with the uh, knotty pine uh, paneling. Got a nice big fireplace, got plenty of room, uh, but it's pretty well filled up with antique Edisons and Victrolas and that sort of thing. But we got plenty of room around my desk like we would normally do a, a training session. Um, I bought calls on e AER and had a surprise run up today. I held the position all the way back to my entry price because it's a trend trade, and I entered on a day chart. You have guidelines for taking profits like today's move. Uh, AER, they're AER is still in this fry pan bottom. 
did a doji type day. Still hasn't shown us that there's any reason to come out of this trade. Now, if it opens lower and starts trading lower tomorrow, I don't think the trade is over. I just think they're going to be taking some profits to the T-line and heading back up. So that will be uh, a function of whether you can get out of the uh, uh, option uh, without too much serious damage by closing it out in between the bid and the ask, and then get ready to buy it back because this is the pattern that we're we're in. Now, on the other hand, if this opens positive tomorrow, you probably want to be buying calls again because uh, that tells me that Doji Sandwich is still pushing this into wave three. That's right. I think Sandy said there was pretty close to 40 of them out there this evening. All right. With that, uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.88 seconds, do another double line. Oops, yeah, I can't even scroll up. Uh, Okay. Yep. Plug. Plug you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Your little stutter steps over. I would be buying this on positive trading tomorrow. That would tell me that little J-hook type pattern uh, is in progress. B-I-O-D. Uh, see the little stutter step? Uh, it brought it up, hit the uh, 200, pulled it right back to the T line. Now you've got a doji gap up, your best friend. This time they should be taking it through the uh, 200. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying. All you have to do now is use the T line as your stop. And STXS, inverted hammer. It's getting sluggish. You got a wedge. Uh, if it opens lower and trades lower, you close out the position because it will have break, broken this bottom part of the uh, wedge. What we're anticipating or should be anticipating a positive open and uh, uh, trading higher. Uh, Ford Motor Company. You can stay long on a short-term basis with the idea that it needs to eventually break this downtrending channel. Uh, and get moving again. We're, I'm looking again to buy this on longer term accounts once it gets up back up through the 50. And Facebook. Ah, humbug. Facebook, all you can do here, notice the, uh, the gap up, a soup type pattern. You stay long until you see a sell signal. Whenever you see these big moves, expect a 45 degree, and all you have to do is stay long as long as it doesn't come back below the T-line. Citigroup. Citigroup, you can be buying and just be aware that the magnitude of return on this one isn't spectacular. Um, I wouldn't. Uh, some of these that are institutional type traders, I wouldn't be trading. This is one of them. Even though it's got a good-looking chart, there's better places to have your money. CMG, CMG needs to break out fast. Otherwise, you're still caught in this kind of sideways mode. Uh, this one should have had a 45 degree, and it's trading flat. I'd be more interested in it after it trades up above this level. And ARWR. All you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal. I would expect a double doji setup. And C, E, and a double doji is if it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately. C, E, N, X, this one should have been closed out today. Um, it had an opportunity to climb back up above the T-line, and it didn't. So this tells me you're probably in a wedge formation or at least a sideways mode until the 50 catches up. And C, R, M, E, this one you should have been out of. This is a perfect example. Now, here, let's analyze this chart. Notice where your gap up occurred. A little gap up doji, even though it wasn't out of the trading range, it was a gap up doji. The next day, they opened up positive. You're up toward the overbought condition. 
this was a perfect point to put your stop right at the previous day's close. Because if it came down through there in an overbought condition, away from the T-line, that tells you the sellers have taken control. That's where you wanted to stop out. If you held on to it, anticipating this might still take you up, if you had an up day, the next day they opened it below the previous day's open, that told you definitely they were taking it down to the T-line. You wanted to be out of this trade. At this point, you should be out of this trade because of the sell signals and the closing below the T-line. ANV, stay long as long as this stays above the T-line. Look at the big fry pan bottom. All you have to do is stay long as long as it stays up above that level. And eBay, who takes all my money every month. This one broke out, kicker type signal off the T-line. Uh, let's take a gander here on what this looks like on a longer time frame. Yeah, if you've broken out through this downtrending channel, so this one you can be buying. This one's still in an uptrend. TQNT, this one expect a 45 degree. MU, this one you should have closed out today with a closing back below the T line, probably coming back down to the uh, lower end of the trend channel. Alcoa, this one you can be staying long and or buying up above the $12 range, uh, telling you that you're, you've broken out of this little uh, congestion of the last three days. XL, XL you should be out of because it closed back below the T-line a few days ago. It needed to open positive and trade positive today, which it didn't do. FTEK has a good-looking chart. This one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. And AVG. AVG uh, did the gap up. Consolidated at the uh, 200, or took its profits at the 200. I would suspect that this is going to waffle until the T-line catches up and then has to push it back up. So if I was trading this one, I would probably be out of it on any weakness tomorrow and wait for the next uh, buy signal. WWE had a potential of doing a doji sandwich, but it backed off. However, the... The uh, slow curve uh, J-hook is still in progress as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. I will give this. I bought calls today anticipating a breakout. I'll give it one more day. More than likely, it's going to come down and test the T-line, do a doji, and then do a morning star signal uh, heading back up. And APOL, another fry pan bottom with a gap up. If this opens positive, you wanted to be buying on a doji sandwich, confirming the, uh, the J-hook pattern. Uh, A-R-I-A, this one is just not anything that I'm getting. We were in this at one time. It's just getting pretty sluggish up here. If this opens lower tomorrow, I'd close it out because that tells me a lot of the steam is gone. This one has to stay above the T-line to stay in it. And U-N-G. Big bearish engulfing. First of all, you had a big bearish engulfing. Now you have another bearish engulfing closing right on the T-line. Makes this very simple. If it opens lower tomorrow after the second uh, bearish engulfing that couldn't get up above that level, you want to close out uh, that position. And PTEX, fry pan bottom, just stay long. But this one needs to open positive and, and trade positive. IBB, is that what we were looking for? S dot IBB. Uh, yes, but note that if this is kind of wave one, wave two, wave three, it might be uh, at the uh, area that you want to start looking for profit taking. ARRS did a little indecisive day. You're still in wave three. I would anticipate uh, positive trading tomorrow 
also use the T-line as your stop. EA, that's a nice looking chart that has broken out through this this channel right here. This is uh, this was enough of a uh, indication to tell you they weren't selling it off. It wasn't rolling over. It was still trying to push through this level, which they did. And we did Citigroup, Amazon, Amazon. Uh, all you can do here is stay short. Notice the kicker signal to the downside. You can't get up above the T-line yet. You're, it had a bullish day. Let's make this bigger. Had a bullish day today, but it still needs to close above the T-line to close out a short position. KIOR, that's a nice little breakout. This one you could be buying. I'd probably be more of an aggressive buyer once it came up through the 50. And O P X A. Another one, I don't know what the volume is. I can't, uh, for some reason, I don't have volume on these charts right now. This one you buy on a positive open. That means you're doing a uh, doji sandwich and you're breaking out through the 50. And Diaz, whoops, let's make this bigger. Uh, this one you can be buying on positive trading also if it comes up through the T-line. Double bottom, got a piercing signal. Now you have a left-right combo. Bullish uh, confirmation would take you through the T-line as well as uh, confirming this signal. HK, stay long. That's a nice fry pan bottom setup with a little J-hook uh, setup. And, and REXX, ah, I don't keep putting J's in here. REXX, uh, this one, ah, there's not enough direction to this one to make it even worthwhile. I probably wouldn't be trading this one at all. I wouldn't even be holding this one at all. BIOD, this one you can be buying. There's your best friend, J Hook pattern. LinkedIn, left right combo. You can be buying this with your anticipation target uh, being the uh, 50 day moving average. Yelp, uh, this one you get ready to buy on positive trading coming out of the slow curve. CBL, this one's in a 45 degree. Whenever you have that big price move, look for a 45 degree with the anticipated target being up at the 200-day moving average. Let's see, CEK4. Corn, then a very slow uptrend. Notice your dimple in the fry pan bottom right here. This one, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line, but not a real exciting chart to be trading right now. And P-R-A-A. -A. Uh, this one has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, they're still taking profits, which means the uh, the T-line is still your viable target to pull back. DDD. Hit the 50, gap down to the T-line, and it looks like it used the 20 as support, closed just above the T-line. You probably wanted to be out of it on the open today with the gap down after hitting the doji at the 50, but you can be back in it on positive trading tomorrow, meaning they've consolidated and they should be taking it back up to the 50-day uh, moving average at least. NLNK, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal. STXS, getting indecisive, your stochastics are flattening out. This better move big one way or the other. If it opens lower, I'd close out the position because it would be reaching this little uh, support level. And VISN was closed out today because it traded back below the T-line. Uh, it closed at the T-line yesterday. 
which meant very simple. It had to open positive and trade positive. It didn't, so it was closed. And WIT, fry pan bottom, get ready to buy this on positive trading tomorrow. OPK, this one you stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Notice your big move. Notice your 45 degree off of here. Apple, we did WAVX. This one you buy if it opens positive tomorrow. You've got your gap up off the T line. If it opens positive, it's breaking out through the uh, whole trading area. LNG. Stay long until you see a sell signal. CTSH, stay long until you see a sell signal. At this point, I'd be using today's open as my stop. Quick, quick uh, has to do something one way or the other here. Um, if it traded lower tomorrow, I'd close out the position. Then you just put your buy stop at 5.30 if it came up through there. You know that they, they're back to pushing it. CMG, same scenario. It needs to do something one way or the other. It's too flat. Uh, it needs to break out to the upside. ARUN. Uh, this one, as you can see, came all the way back down to the, uh, the T line. This one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. It tells you the uh, profit taking of, of Friday is over. What is today? Monday, yes. Um, you can be buying this because notice what hasn't changed, the trajectory of the uh, fry pan bottom. However, if they trade this back below the T-line, this signal becomes in effect, and it starts breaking your uh, fry pan bottom trajectory. And halo, stay long on this one. That's a uh, uh, you stay long after the little kind of a J-hook pattern. So you see a sell signal. An RSOL uh, wouldn't be long or short this one. There's no direction whatsoever. Act. Uh, this one you stay long. Uh, notice you're not, a, not only above the T line, but you're above the three T line, but not excessively. That means you're probably still in a good strong uptrend. FLT, this one broke out through this resistance level. This one also you stay long until you see a sell signal. And CCIH, oh no. Well, Pashal, we're back to the hiccup. See if we can find something else. No, nah, we're at the hiccup. Son of a gun. There we go. Two, two needs to see a positive open. And uh, after the uh, doji gap up, needs to see positive trading. You can be buying. Same scenario with STX. Let me make this big enough. XTX had a gap up the other day through this downtrending resistance level. Then today it told us the selling has stopped. If it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying. Oh, I'm fading lower. I may, Carl, I may have just been mumbling here for a little bit. Well, Pasha. RXII, ah, can't tell. Um, there might be more to it than that, but at this point, you stay long until you see a sell signal. ERX, stay long until you see a sell signal. Nothing, nothing there to tell you to come out of that one. CERX, looks like the little wedge consolidation's over. This one, if it opens positive, you can be buying. That rail, 
Uh, this one, you've got some upside, but not any great magnitude of upside. I guess you got a 10%. It definitely needs to get through the 50 uh, real quick. Jive. Uh, this one you can buy on positive tra trading using the T-line tomorrow. And S. B G I. Uh, just stay long as long as it stays above the T line, but uh, yeah, it needs to break out obviously through the 200 very quickly. Hot. Whoops. S dot H O T. Notice the uh, Doji gap up on the stutter step. Now you're right at this breakout level. This is another one where you stay long until you see a sell signal. And Earth. Uh, Earth is one of those where if you close it out, you buy it back, especially if it opens positive. That tells you this uptrending is still in progress. STX, we did. This one you buy on positive trading, anticipating it going right to the 200-day uh, moving average. S or GXD. Stay long until you see a sell signal. I think we did ARWR. This one you stay long, especially if it does a double doji. DBA. Oops. S dot DBA. This one you stay long. That's a good looking chart. Uh, but I would use today's open as my stop with a gap up. SEM got started but kind of sagged. Um, this one, if you bought it today on positive trading, it needs to open positive and come right back up. If it opens lower tomorrow, you close out the position because you'll still be caught in this sideways channel. You want to be someplace else. Beat. Uh, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal confirmed. It's not there yet. Freeport. This one has to open positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, close out the position. It's not going anywhere. And HIMX. Another one that you shouldn't be long or short. There's nothing there yet. It should have done something major here at the uh, 50, and it hasn't done it yet. Uh, BP is in British Petroleum. Stay long. Still above the 3T line. Oh, what happened here? How can you? S-I-N-A. This one uh, has to open positive. If it opens lower, it's coming back to the T-line. And T-Q-N-T. Uh, watch for a 45 degree to come off of here. I think we did F-T-E-K. Uh, this one you can be buying on positive trading. Uh, earnings tomorrow, okay. Oh, electronic arts, all right. Uh, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal. Notice how it started with that kicker type signal to the upside. Uh, let's see, P, G, N, X. Well, this one you shouldn't be in. You can't short it because it's below five bucks. I'm getting all these little messages. Can't short it because it's below five bucks. Uh, you don't want to be in this one. Ever since you saw the left right at the 20 and then coming back down through the T line, tells you there's no buyers there. GTN, nice little fry pan bottom. This one you stay long. Wouldn't be buying it here, 
Well, I wouldn't be buying it here until it gets to the 50. And GGAL. Uh, this one you get ready to buy on positive trading. Notice the consolidation right back on the T-line or on the 50. And now the T-line's caught up to the 50. This one you can buy on positive trading tomorrow um, going into wave three. CRM, stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Nothing wrong there. Scotty, you have to watch to see what it does. At last I saw a trading was down here somewhere. You'll have to see what they do with it from that point. MHR, this one should have been closed out today. OXBT. I wouldn't be long or short on this one. It's caught in the sideways. And GTLS. Uh, this one you can stay long, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not real exciting yet. It needs a breakout. Okay. Uh, on your buybacks. Do you buy during the day or wait till the close? If I see something that has come down through the uh, the T-line and then starts coming, let's say I got stopped out here. We were using this as an example the other day. If you got stopped out here, that was the right thing. But then when you saw them buying and bringing it right back up through the T-line, that's where I'd be buying back, anticipating or bringing it back up above the T-line in an uptrend already. CRM, I think we did. Just stay long. Earnings, uh, okay. CBI. Uh, this one, uh, you can stay in. It's doing a kind of a J hook. Just be aware that your magnitude of return on this one isn't going to be dynamic. And QIHU, this one, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T line. MGM, Whew. not the MGM we wanted. What this one? Nice fry pan bottom with a doji sandwich that broke you out. They're taking it to the top of the trend channel. If I can get my mouse to, which tells you that they've got another six, seven points to the upside on this one. Let's see. Oops, S A P C. Anadarko. Uh, this one, if you're in it, it has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, it's sideways. It's not going anywhere. And Goldman. Goldman is in an uptrend, but this is one of those where if you're buying it, you're buying it with as much leverage as possible, for example, uh, uh, options. But you did have the cradle formation here. This one you stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. You have a speaker on Thursday night. If so, who? I don't know. Yeah, I think we do. I don't know who it is. Let me see if I know who it is. No, I don't know who it is. Becky told me today. Let me see if I can find what Becky said. Oh, weekly options. This Thursday night with Chris uh, Verhagen. TSO. Uh, just stay long on this one as long as it stays above the T line. I think we did EXSI or EXXI. This one you can be buying on positive trading. It will go to the 200. Um, 
Thank you, Chitu. Weekly options, yes. Okay, with that, let's see, I skipped SPN. SPN, did a gap up in the overbought condition? If this comes back down through today's low, close out the position. They'll be bringing it back down. All right, with that, everybody have a good evening. I've got to go feed the deer again. They just keep eating all this darn corn. So, all right, we'll see everybody in the chat rooms tomorrow.